The latest salvo from Florida Governor Ron DeSantis in his war on all things woke looks to fulfill one longtime right-wing fantasy, stripping away press freedoms with repercussions that would extend far beyond the not-so-free state of Florida through a pair of new bills. One would require bloggers who write about elected officials to register with the state like lobbyists and disclose payments or be subject to fines. And another, HB 991, would make it easier to sue for defamation, lowering the bar for suing not just for journalists, but anyone potentially making supposedly defamatory statements, including over social media. Ron DeSantis has made no effort to hide his true intentions. Last month, he said he wants to make it easier to sue media outlets, taking aim at overturning the landmark 1964 New York Times Company versus Sullivan Supreme Court decision. That case centered around a full-page ad in the paper from civil rights groups fundraising for Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s legal defense in 1960, describing a wave of terror in police actions across the South. Most of the charges were accurate, but there were some factual errors. L.B. Sullivan, the Montgomery, Alabama public safety commissioner who oversaw the local police, sued for libel, claiming it implied him. And he won. But the Supreme Court justices overturned the lower court, finding that public officials must show that what was said was done with actual malice. It's also the Supreme Court precedent that Fox News, by the way, is using to defend itself against voting machine company Dominion's $1.6 billion defamation lawsuit. How's that? For irony. Joining me now is State Representative Fentrice Driscoll of Florida, who is the uh, leader of the Democratic opposition in the State House, and Bobby Block, Robert Bobby Block, journalist and executive director of the Florida First Amendment Foundation. Bobby, I do want to go with you first. This bill, um, HB 991, I want to read a little bit about this and its actual malice uh, clause. A public figure does not need to show actual malice to prevail in a defamation cause of action when the allegation does not relate to the reason for his or her public status. This shall infer actual malice for purposes of a defamation action when the defamatory action is fabricated by the defendant or is the product or his or her imagination or is based wholly on an unverified anonymous report. In, in other words, the way I'm reading that is that if, let's say, a news organization was, was uh, reporting on a public official who used a slur, they could be sued for defamation. They could be sued for defamation if they reported, it seems to me, anything that was negative about Ron DeSantis or a member of the state legislature. Am I reading that wrong? The, the, there's a lot of provisions. It's very difficult to take a single provision out of this piece of legislation, and it, 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 it interlocks in a way. There are some other provisions in there whereby it doesn't even have to be false because it revives another legal uh, uh, maneuver, which has already been uh, overruled by the Florida Supreme Court, but they're reintroducing and it's called a false light tort, which means you could write something about a public official that is 100 percent true. But if the official deems that the intent of the article was to make him look bad, him or her look bad, then that would be enough for defamation. The section that you're referring to basically attempts to turn uh, New York Times v. Sullivan on its head. So if I write an article, say, about a, um, a, let's say, the commissioner of agriculture, and I say he never graduated high school, and that could be absolutely true, but it has nothing to do with his official job as a commissioner, he could sue on the basis of that. Or if I say something that's false, um, that I was a result of an honest mistake, like in the New York Times v. Sullivan case, right. that also could be grounds for defamation. And last but not least, if you a quote an anonymous source, according to this legislation, if it becomes law, and you are not willing to identify the source in a trial, then under this provision of this law, it automatically has to be presumed to be false and therefore wow. is grounds for defamation. Uh, you know, uh, Minority Leader Driscoll, I mean, you are an attorney. I mean, this sounds to me like they are attempting to chill any reporting on the governor or on Republican state legislatures that would embarrass them in any way. So if they did something um, or if anyone in the state that is a Republican did something that would be just considered discriminatory or uh, racist or bigoted, they could be 
they could sue. And I'm going to add to that another thing that the administration is doing right now, that the DeSantis administration is doing. The Department of Management Services has changed the rules for groups or individuals who want to reserve space inside the Capitol. The changes require organizations seeking to reserve areas to make their requests through specific administration officials or legislative leaders that require that they line up with the mission of the state. That means no protests. So you have to agree with Ron DeSantis' beliefs and his policies, or you can't have a permit to be in the Capitol for an event. That's very, um, I don't know, you could do that in Havana and it would fit right in. Right. You know, and yes, Leader Fentress Driscoll here. Joy, this is why we appreciate you so much, because you are telling the truth of what is happening in Florida. And I do believe that this is of national interest because if people don't want Florida's present day reality to become their future, folks need to know what Ron DeSantis is doing here because he does intend to run for president in 2024. At least all signs indicate that. And this bill, frankly, it feels like a recycled Trump rant turned into a bill, right? Because the goal is to expose media companies and critics to so much liability that it chokes out strong journalism of any, any dissent. And as a lawyer and an elected official, I was frankly speechless when I read this bill. It will do more to damage the freedom of speech and the free press than has been done in nearly 250 years of American history. And it takes away the shield media has used against public figures for years, taking away their ability to hold the powerful accountable. And, you know, uh, Bobby Block, you know, there's, there's this media tick where they try to say, that Trump and DeSantis are completely different, and that DeSantis is some sort of moderate. Um, but, you know, the, the post that you wrote on your website, the First Amendment Foundation, talks about a world in which, you know, the only thing that reporters could report on are, are dogs and cats and puppies because they're too afraid to report on anything else. Flor Trump and DeSantis have both said that they would like to be able to sue media outlets that report things that are true about them that they don't like. And I just want to go through some of these bills. They've got this, you know, they, they've taken over Disney. They have Don't Say Gay, which is the state telling teachers what they can say in class. You have the Stop Woke Act that says you can't make anyone feel uncomfortable, and they mean white Americans uncomfortable. They have restrictions on library materials. They're telling people what they can read. They're telling people that they can't protest. They're saying that they cannot protest or that you can attack protesters with your car. It feels like everything is consolidating around making sure that no one can criticize the current governor ahead of his running for president. It's more than just the governor. What what the what the, these bills do when you take them into their whole account is it's death to public discourse. It it it, it you can't be in any media and without feeling the sting of this potential legislation. <laughs> 